uh, but moving on to uh, what we're watching, we have to talk about the Winchester's mid-season premiere, which kind of just felt like a middle of the road episode for it to be the episode we were watching when it came back, um, coming back. It was cute. There's some moments I'm excited to talk about. Um, mm. We should talk about Sam, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm excited. I was excited to see Tom Welling and I still am. I enjoy that an awful lot. Um, but yeah, character's kind of awful, right? Yes. They have good um, father-daughter chemistry, mm-hmm. I will say, Tom and Meg. Um, but yeah, he was kind of like selfish and I don't know. Well, they it was fun it. seeing Tom, I will mm-hmm. say. It was. He gave grisly, gruff father who like doesn't want to listen to anybody and then Meg did wonderfully as like the daughter who's sick of him who needs him to pay attention to the fact that he's deteriorating on the couch right now so if you mm-hmm. would just drink your tea like I told you to <laughs> <laughs> the, the, there was a moment that was so I think unintentionally funny but it was funny to me when he was like I think I know where to find the queen and then does he pass out or fall asleep what happens there he stops yeah. talking. Yes, that's right. Yeah. He does. And he then does. they cut to the next scene and Mary's telling Carlos and Lata. And he's like, I, my dad knows where to find the queen. And they were like, well, does he say where he was? And she was like, no. <laughs> she was like, he fell asleep. And I was like, <laughs> what was this about? <laughs> that went nowhere. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel like he definitely changed up the dynamic, but he also lived up to his reputation because we kind of learned over the run of the show that he made Mary into the person that she is, the um, the badass hunter who kind of rushes headfirst into danger. And I do, I love the fact that we pivoted in the end, and that that's the reason he cut her out because he seen that he seen what he was turning her into, and he didn't want that life for. Her. Because you but learn, like, be that, honest about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm so sick of these characters that are like, I did this to protect you. And it's like, well, then like tell her <laughs> this girl was like running around looking for you. <laughs> and he was still, he had those walls and he had those shields up right throughout the whole episode. He was kind of mean to John. He was kind of but mean But John to... bit right back. Yeah. He did. Yeah. yeah. I was oh, like, yeah. oh, John, what did you just do? <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that I think it's because his reputation precedes him. Nobody was having any of his rubbish. Whenever he tried to put those walls up, they bit right back. Same with Millie. I, can I just say, I love the fact that Millie stood up to him pretty quickly. I think that impressed him um, because he's not, he's not used to being talked back to. And basically everyone in that house was talking back to him. And he was like, what? So that was nice to say. Yeah, he knows place. You're the new one here, guy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> but I couldn't tell if like if I liked John like defending Mary to him, or if I was like, dude, you just met him. Like that's a little disrespectful. Mm-hmm. But I think I liked it. I liked I it. Think, yeah, I think I liked that we see that he's he really cares about Mary. Well, I think it's also mm-hmm. so this might be one of those things where because we know where John and Mary end up the story is writing in that way because what he did it was very much I'm the person in her life um she's talked to me about this situation before and I don't like the way that you just talked to her so I, let me say this as politely as I can say it but also treat her better which is something you typically see from somebody's partner and at, at that time they weren't together but the show knows they're going to be together so we're just going to do it prematurely mm-hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah John's definitely that kind of like timid person that will say the most uh, uh, something that can be disrespectful but said in the most respectful way possible and I feel like that sums his character up and you definitely got that across from that but it was nice the fact that um Sam's like oh I know everything I've been doing this for years but the the one part of his life he didn't know was what was happening over these last however many months that this team's been together and it was quite the realization for him not just to see that John was more than he gave him credit for but how how much the people he once knew had grown like how much Mary had developed her own little team there and maybe it happened a little bit quickly but I really enjoyed seeing it from his perspective because we've seen so much of the show from Mary's perspective about what her father would say what what he would think and what he would do so actually get to see this, this from Sam's perspective and him to understand that hold on a minute my, my my daughter's turned into this great hunter all on her own and she has her own team which is something he never had I think that's what separates him can we fast forward a little bit a lot of it to the end <laughs> when Carlos is performing and they're watching him and that moment when they look John and Mary look at each other like in mm-hmm. the eyes I was like oh <laughs> and I, I was like oh put your head on the shoulder like hold him do something and then it cut and it didn't do it. And I was like, oh, come on. And then it cut back to them and they did it. And I screamed at the television. <laughs> <laughs> They're so sweet. There's something so um, 
intimate about their their connection with each other. They just feel like a little bubble of them, even mm-hmm. when they're around other people. Because Lato was sitting there enjoying herself, um, as she should. But like those two were kind of like, I'm here with you. This is like our first date, but not a date. Like in in the song's really nice, and I think this episode did a really good job of giving us little John and Mary moments because John also has that great moment in the kitchen where he tells her the story about um, his fellow soldiers who would do things in the war zone that they shouldn't be doing, um, like hot wiring cars, uh, because they thought they wouldn't have to deal with the consequences. And that was his way of telling her that me kissing you was not me thinking we were going to die. It's me wanting to have a, um, a relationship with you and I love that he gave her space to have time like we didn't get angry about it we just accepted it um mm-hmm. and then she just popped out at the end like you know what don't need time let's be together <laughs> <laughs> that was a really awkward kiss to me yeah, it, was, that's <laughs> ooh, it, 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 it lasted longer than I thought it would from that weird angle mm-hmm. but it was mm-hmm. so cute and then it ended really abruptly with the reveal which okay we're jumping ahead again but the picture from it was Sam's stuff right Yes. 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 He had those photos. Yep. Mm -hmm. I recognized the car. I was like, is that the car from Supernatural? And I was literally like, I couldn't tell who it was. I was like, zoom in. Come on. I need to, I couldn't tell who it was. (laughs) And I didn't find out until the morning after that it was Jensen. (laughs) (laughs) It was okay. What's going on, Michael? Please explain what implications this has. (laughs) Oh my goodness. You know, when you turn to me for my Arrowverse knowledge, I'm like, yes, Reed, let me say this. I don't have that. Yeah, Michael's like, I got nothing. (laughs) Um, uh, I don't know. I feel like this show has been doing the whole possible multiversal theory. And you see, I think this was one of the first times we heard Jensen's voiceover at the start in a couple of episodes, I think. So I was like, oh, we're doing that again. Because CW shows usually drop the voiceover like three episodes in. And it's usually a good choice. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, So the fact that it came back and then I was like, okay, this has to be going somewhere. I did not, did not anticipate that ending. I don't know what it means. Has he come from the future? Has he come from the multiverse? Is It's confusing. Is his ghost trying to get his parents together? I really don't know because they're kind looking of... at a photo of their adult son and they're like, who's this guy? It's like <laughs> <laughs> I'm down for it. I think it's so fun. Um, but it is a little confusing to me. Also, the villain, Loki, he's from the original series, right? Yes, yes. I, I remember from him. Twitter. Everyone was like freaking out and I was like, I don't, I don't know anything about this. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hiddleston, it is not. <laughs> I was watching that and I was like, wait, I remember him. Um, but I, I could not tell you what he got up to. But I assume when I assume Supernatural dealt with how he came out of the mirror. So it only made sense that in this episode they put him back in it so that in the future you could come back out of it. But are we dealing with the same timeline now? Who knows anymore? Um, it's just, I don't know. Um, uh, this show gets more more exciting as it goes on. I do think the last two episodes maybe could have handled their primary story better, but we're dealing more we're dealing with more than just the Akrita at this point. Whatever is going on with Dean Winchester is arguably the most exciting part of the show. Yeah. Do we have time to wrap this up? I I can't see where wait to see where it goes. I know. I just. It's... But see how we're talking about everything but the main part of the episode, which <laughs> which was the um I did like that we went into a deep dive of Carlos's previous mm-hmm. life as a musician and the reasons why he could no longer live that dream of his. But it just felt like this wasn't the episode to do it in. We came mm-hmm. hot off the tail of the Akrita um situation in um Sam and then we went right on an adventure with Lada and Carlos at the what is it the nave of hearts and I was like wait we're gonna spend the episode here I don't care about Loki we need to go back to the Akrita <laughs> uh, uh, um and I thought you know it was all gonna connect in some fashion it didn't it was our monster of the week and I was like mm. so it was really it was for me it was like pulling teeth every time we went back to that plot I was like oh, how much more time do I have? And every time I went back to the actual plot that we've been working on for episodes, I got um, invested in the episode again. And I hated that because I wanted to be invested in Carlos's story. I just felt like this wasn't the time to do it. Yeah, yeah. And the A story is supposed to be what was happening with John and Mary and of course Samuel as well. And that was very much the B story of this episode. And then I, I did say, okay, we get to spend some time with John and Mary here and maybe get some more scenes. And then they had that wonderful scene at the start where then she was like, maybe I just need some time. And then they didn't really go back to it after that. I know the story moved on and whatever, and then they did get there in the end, but I thought we were going to get to spend more time with them. And 
sometimes those are the kind of nice episodes you need because at the end of the day, when there's end life and death stakes every so often, you never really get a chance to sit with the characters. But it spent an awful lot of time just bringing Samuel back into the fold, which was exciting in and of itself. I just don't feel like this episode did what it said on the tin or it did what the promo suggested it would. Everything was there. I just don't think it all came across in the right way. Does that make sense? I almost kind of wish this had been the mid-season finale. Um, mm. Like, no shade to Tom Welling. That reveal was really big, but I think the Dean reveal was bigger. It would have been a much more satisfying cliffhanger to end on for the holidays. Um, and I think the story might have hit a little harder, especially with the John and Mary developments, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Like, you see them kiss and then discover their adult son fade to black we're celebrating christmas and then we have to wait till the new year <laughs> <laughs> and there would have been a lot of speculation in mm. fandom potentially even in the media about what this could potentially mean um but now i mean now we have it and it's like okay well, we'll probably just find out on tuesday <laughs> and, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah it was a solid episode it kind of just didn't work as a mid-season premiere i think because like you said sabrina threw us right into a villain of the week and of course a big supernatural villain that's important but if you had not watched the show previously that might not mean as much to you as obviously the main story does mm -hmm. i barely remember I, was, I knew that man because i had seen him before because someone because of the casting announcement which i had forgotten about but if i was someone who didn't know anything but like okay well he's here <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he came he went and he went that was that yeah but all in all, it was okay. Um, mm -hmm. It'd be exciting when we get to the vampires and what mm. that has to do with anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? But I'm excited. <laughs> yes.